right. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. This is my talk. And, oh, is the 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 Zoom overlay isn't show? Okay, we're good. Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, my talk is about enriching a player's experience with RNG. Uh, so super quick. Who am I? Uh, my name is Echo Berry. I'm an artist turned solo dev. I have four visual novels out currently, and the three most recent use R uh, RNG in some way. And of course, I like this. I'm an RNG enjoyer. I'm here to try and convince you to include RNG in your games. So. Uh, yeah, so what do I mean by RNG? I mean variance that isn't decided by the player through a direct choice, but instead the computer, in this case RemPy, um, although this can be used for any software. It can be applied to any elements, so sprites, backgrounds, CGs, dialogue variation, sound variation, animations, and even like story flow. So why bother? Um, a lot of games are actually already using it in some form. A lot of people like do the animation blinks and randomize the timing on that. Uh, there's also like splash screen silly messages and it's the component in a lot of mini games. If you envision a scene in multiple ways or if you're wanting to add more to a finished game, this could be a, an option of fitting everything in. I do also believe it encourages Let's Players and their audience to consider your game knowing that they'll get a unique experience. <clears throat> Uh, so the RemPy tools to do this, the main one is, of course, RemPy.random. You can take anything from the Python random module and just slap RemPy dot on the front of it, and it'll become compatible with rollback. So it's not just the ones listed here, um, although it does mention it, of course. Um, but it took me a while to realize that was actually there. Um, so yeah, even, even these like more complex ones work perfectly out the box. Uh, some people are saying the slides aren't updating. Oh, really? Mm, oh, I think paused. Oh, very sorry. I think I... We all good? We're uh, good now. You unshared what happened. Unshared, did I? Yeah. Oh right now it's back to like. I'm so sorry. Okay. There we go. Screen two. Share. Okay. And screen share loading. I? Participants can see my screen. Yep. I see and I'm just not going to touch anything. Okay. <laughs> Are we all good? Yep. Okay. Uh, so so yes. Here's the who am I slide. The what do I mean by RNG. Yep. It works. And the randomization slide. The why bother. Um, so yeah, it encourages, uh, let's, oh, sorry. Yeah, I got to the RemPy tools. Um, so yeah, you can take anything in the Python random module and just slap RemPy dot on it and it works perfectly at the box. Uh, I was pointing to these examples here. Um, you can just use these, which are uncommon, but useful, usable. Um, we also have the RemPy choice statement, uh, which most people will be familiar with. However, it isn't rollback compatible. I'll be getting to that a little bit later on. We also have RemPy Tom's May 2019 Patreon article, um, which uh, the block and random statements specifically are super useful for this. And then we have this chunk of code here, which is technically a randomization tool, but it's not for directly randomizing game elements. Uh, RemPy changes its seed and therefore it's randoms on reload. So if you don't want people like save scumming, uh, you can stop people from getting a different result when they reload a save uh, by using this. So let's say we're wanting to randomize the exposition uh, of a character within a scene. How would you go about doing that using the tools uh, shown above? Uh, well, we can let RemPy choose between a range. Uh, we can choose a float and between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. Uh, we can choose an integer randomly between a defined range, in this case, the whole screen width, but you can, of course, change that if you just want to set uh, range. And then you can also use uh, an integer as an argument in a transform, which is potentially good for more complex implementations. Um, we also have choosing between several defined options. So if you have a couple that really could work, but it has to be one of those, and you'd like to randomly choose between it, uh, RemPy's choice statement, as, as mentioned before, is good, but it isn't compatible with rollback. So you could set something up like this, where you have the, the, the transforms defined, and then RemPy.random.choice and choosing between them. And that is, in fact, rollback compatible. Uh, we also have the Patreon statements, as uh, mentioned before. The, the link to the article is here. It is public. Um, uh, the random and block statements are very useful for dialogue-based randomization. In this case, like changing the exposition and then acknowledging it using the dialogue. Um, we also have layered images. They are a very useful tool, specifically the if function. So you can set up a layered image where it like reacts to a, a, a randomization later like in the script. And in this case, I've taken an image and then tinted it different colors. This in, in more practical application, this would probably be like uh, you're taking a sky color and then tinting it maybe like different kinds of sunset or, or maybe just like times of day entirely. Um, if you're willing to add additional drawn assets, uh, you can do that and, and randomize those. He is one of my characters uh, who uh, changes her accessories randomly on a daily basis. 
And uh, yeah, again, uh, layered images is the tool to use that. Um, so where could randomization fit? If you're wanting to use randomization, looking for areas where it could be used is, of course, important. Uh, considering both the variance as well as the change between those variants and what that could mean, because the change itself is often very important. Um, I kind of got a, a, a chunky list here. I don't know if I have time to read all of it out, but um, conveying character's personality is, is quite a good one. Uh, back, back to this character, she likes to accessorize, and therefore having different accessories is, is pretty important, even though like exactly which accessory she has on that day isn't, isn't the, the focus. So there are some cons. Uh, the main one is, of course, players might miss out on content. You should be wary of segmenting off your content in a way that only a section of your players might get to experience it, especially if that scene is important to the story, uh, especially if a game isn't set up to be played multiple times. Many people won't. It takes additional work to implement. This is also quite a decent downside. I'm not in favor of anyone bogging down their development, so I would stress that this is something that might not be necessary for a project. And it really doesn't suit every project, so don't feel obligated to use it. And then I sort of have uh, an important questions to ask if you're going to use randomization. Uh, could this be more meaningful as a choice the player could it make themselves? This is very important. Generally, you don't want to remove agency from the player. If something could be a choice, it probably should be. Uh, are all variants the player could experience equally strong? If not, why do you have them? Is it bogging down your development? Again, you got to watch for scope creep. Uh, what's essential to the core of your story? What shouldn't change? And what can you let go of slash allow players to experience differently between playthroughs? Uh, so yeah, that's my talk. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. I'm new to Zoom, <laughs> but I thought I had everything figured out. Don't apologize for what the machine is doing. It's the machine <laughs> fault. It's that's true. That's machine. wise advice. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, everyone was really supportive. And thank you. Yeah, worry. I appreciate like, it. We've had explosions before. This is not the first and won't be the last. <laughs> okay. Does anyone have questions? Questions? Because oh, I'm seeing a lot of nice comments. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of clapping things. Uh oi. Right. Uh, oh, everyone loved the little randomizing of like the little outfit thing. That was really oh cool. yeah, yeah. No, I, I had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. So, but, oh, I'll put it back to the oh, what is the it? mega the slide with list the, of stuff. The yeah. List. Okay. So let's see. Someone has a question of how do you know you've had enough choices versus writing too many endings and having production creep. <laughs> Oh, um, I think, well, it's it's difficult, right? Because it's project by project, but I would say um, it's not necessarily the amount of choices or, or, or the even the, well, I mean, the randomization, yes, but um, to keep a VN clean and tight, I would just like make the, the, the choices and the variants small, right? So um, for the, the accessories example, all of these took like maybe five minutes to draw. I mean, this is coming from, again, I'm an artist, so... The, take with that what you will but um the 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 actual implementation took about five minutes and then it was checking to make sure it worked and then it was done uh so i mean you, you of course can get a bit carried away but it sort of depends on the um like the how serious the visual novel is if you want like a really tight clean um experience you probably really don't want randomization at all if you do it in very small places where it won't affect that tight linear experience it's it's sort of dependent because if you just want to make if you want to randomize everything you could do that you know that that might suit a project um 